and welcome to another episode of Worst Collection Ever. This is the show where we tell you about the worst comic book collection in existence, and it just happens to belong to us. I'm Jen. And I'm Sean. Here we are. Yeah. No guys in capes this week. (laughs) (laughs) No, we didn't see anything. Didn't really do much of anything besides, you know, work. No, but we did get some good comments on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, our buddies, uh, Nick, Lane it. Yep, Lane, his buddy, uh, Lane it. Okay, so I got to make sure I get their tweeters right. The old twits. Yeah, whatever. The stupid Twitter. Twitter's stupid. Twitter is stupid. It's dumb. <laughs> it's dumb garbage. All right. I think that's how they pitched it. They were like, I have an idea for this thing where you can talk to people on the internet, and it, I'd like to call it dumb garbage. And they're like, How about Twitter? You're like, I guess that works. Yep. Um, so our buddy Lanet360 mm-hmm. was uh, very much uh, into our discussion about downtown Dracula. Yeah, dude with the cape. As is uh, his buddy, who goes by Moz, uh, Mazinger 1978, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. M-A-Z-I-N-G-E-R, M-A-Z-I-N-G-E-R, I'm sorry, M-A-Z-I-N-G-E-R 1978, uh, he has been... Uh, quite active in asking us about they, they, they were quite active and talk about downtown dracula yeah yeah and i appreciate that because yeah I think that's a, we're gonna it's the screenplay we'll never write oh, we're not gonna write anything <laughs> that's not true i'm writing stuff now it just doesn't have to be downtown dracula yeah, that's we're not, all we're not, we're not doing that. i mean well i mean yeah i mean yeah we'll i have i have so many ideas for horror movies that i think we should write together mm-hmm. yeah i know Hollywood and Die. Hollywood and Die. Palm Screams. Palm Screams. That's it. That's those, those, those two. I thought I had a third one. Was it the Halloween Casino? No, there was Nobody a... did that. No, no, no. This was... Somebody... It was a, It was another horror movie, and I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But it wasn't... Halloween, Halloween Casino was a romantic comedy. Oh. Uh, oh, so it's sex. About... I believe it was... McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey uh, and some chick trying to fuck basically like trying that like that <laughs> what was a pat nozzle yeah, bit where it's that's bit, all yeah. it is uh that was that yeah it was so it, no no killing just boning yeah yeah okay so look i just want to i'll get this out i'm just gonna get this out okay i am slightly on edge this weekend because of all this north korea trump kaboom bullshit mm-hmm. it's very frustrating um i have part of me feels like there's a bargain in place where if this goes down and Los Angeles gets exploded, it's going to be like, Trump's going to be like, well, look. They the were liberals good, anyway. They were liberals anyway. They didn't vote for me. <laughs> so and, it's okay. So it's okay. And like, that's totally what's going to be. You know, it's going to be a lot of, a lot of bargaining. It's like, look, you can blow up this part and just see if it works, you know. <laughs> and then Trump's going to go to the moon. I don't think Trump's going to go to the moon. He's going to go to a bunker. I think there's, there's no, re- there's nothing on the moon. How do you know that? There's nothing on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the moon. I thought, I thought Bush was going to go to the moon. I thought he was going to Mars. <laughs> At least well, Black, that was, that was, that was Black Bush was going to Mars. Black Bush was going to Mars. He knew he was going to go a bit farther out, you know, but, yeah. uh, you know, the moon, it's where it's at. Mm. Just gonna put out, they're going to put Camp David on the moon. <laughs> It's the best moon. It's the best moon. There's already a hotel on the moon. We just can't see it. Oh, God. It's probably a Trump hotel. It's totally a Trump hotel. He had it figured. He was already started. That's why he became president, because he had, he had the Trump, Trump hotel on the moon. And he was just like, look, I'm just going to blow Trump up. Trump crater. Blow, we're just going to blow up California. I'm just going to go hang out with the, uh, the Inhumans. <laughs> Do they live on the moon? Yeah, and so well, and the Transformers. Well, the Transformers, the yeah, yeah. I, that I was, a, I remember. And then he's going to fight the Decepticons to blow up the moon. And then he's going to just go to Mars because we're already getting Mars ready. Yeah. So he's going to go, and Matt Damon's going to come with him because he thinks Matt Damon's an actual scientist. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to teach me to grow a potato. He's going to grow me the best potatoes <laughs> on the moon. Grow me some premium spuds. <laughs> premium spuds. Premium spuds. <laughs> yeah. That's what. That's actually my. Uh, that's my new uh, space drama. Premium it's like, it's spuds. Like, it's like Gravity, but with Donald Trump's called it's premium spuds. <laughs> It, it's just a, a reality TV show where Donald Trump and, and Matt Damon try to grow uh, potatoes on the moon, but they, no, or they on ju- Mars. No, no, they judge the potatoes. Oh, okay. So they have like groups so the, of people coming they got, in they to got try chefs, to, you know, and stuff, and they work to make the best <laughs> potatoes. Is that the new Chopped? It's like premium spot. Yeah, it's yeah. like Chopped in space. Yeah, they're like in in your basket. You have nothing but Mars potatoes. <laughs> Mars potatoes. And, you're, and, and uh, for you're, le- and you're, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And uh, your only judges are Donald Trump and Matt Damon. <laughs> 
people who do not know, Drew Marguerite is a writer for Deadspin, and he's very funny. And he was on Chopped once in a very ugly shirt, and he won. That was an ugly shirt. It was a very ugly shirt, and he won, and good for him. But uh, the gifts uh, are gifts that keep coming, Mm -hmm. I just have to say. I know. We're going to lose out on gifts in this world. You know that? <laughs> like, you look, oh, well, someone will give. Someone will give. Launch the Los Angeles exploding, <sighs> and then they're just going to use it in, in like snarky comments for like the rest of eternity. You it's know, like, it's like when she shows you that when she shows <laughs> so you that may, ass <laughs> when you show her the D, and when it's just Los Angeles getting that blown D up. It's more than I was expecting. <laughs> It's going to be the but because all, all the good because me- all the good memers are in New York. Yeah, know? well, that's we true. So we'll be fine. <laughs> and, uh, Nash uh, Katradamus's Kast- father. Yeah, oh, he's they're in all- Miami now. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's. Right. But all the good all East Coast. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all East Coast. They're fine. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be the but her emails <laughs> <laughs> of hot take gifts. <laughs> and that's right. I say gif. Fuck gif. I'm not saying it. <laughs> oh yeah, we well, says gif. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm kind of, and I did not pick this book this week based on this. I picked it because it was stupid. Well, I, I mean, I would have picked it on. It. I would have picked it on the cover alone. Well, right. which is kind of a great cover. Yeah, it is a great cover. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll so get, we'll have to talk about it. We'll get to it. I don't know what else are we doing. No new comics this week. No, I did buy. You bought your the one you needed. I bought what, what, the one I needed. We actually did a really good job because we went to the bug and they had like a bajillion dollar boxes and I said no. Yeah, because I already have so many that I haven't because, read. Because I'm trying to put all my you know the books books in order and trying to sort everything and I realized I needed more bags. I needed a box. It was funny because I was telling you this that I went to the bug and I had to use the bathroom and I'm sitting in there and I felt very comfortable. Like I felt like I was home. <laughs> It was weird. I mean, look, and I'm saying, I mean, it's it's it's, it's just a, a bathroom with a slash utility closet, but I felt very comfortable. I was like, you know what? I could live here. And I thought about just going out on the floor and just lay, laying on the tables. I'm sure they would have appreciated that at Maybe their place of business. Yeah, they got more they got room there. <laughs> They'd have been like, oh, another one sleeping. Another one sleeping. Yep. All I'm telling right. you that this is the sign that we need to open up our comic books. I think, that, slash I think, I think that was it. It's like, I think that's how I got, how I'll tell if, uh, if the place is right for us, if the, if the bathroom makes me feel like home. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to love to explain the realtor to, that takes us around. We're going to be like, he just, we have to like, is he wait. napping in the toilet? You, yep. you don't understand. He, he's going to have to, this is a whole process for him. <laughs> so why don't you tell me about the sconcing or whatever? <laughs> yeah. No, but we did pretty good because we didn't really, you know, I only bought the first issue of the early 80s Jack of Hearts miniseries from Marvel because I've been trying to find them and they don't collect them at all that because he's not that popular of a character but I've always been interested by it because Jack of Hearts maybe we'll do that for this show yeah I was gonna say have we ever done a Jack of Hearts well he's only had the one miniseries but he's a very confusing character because a lot of stuff about him is just he's very... called Jack of Hearts have we ever had him on the show I don't think we have I feel like we have maybe maybe we'll do like a he Marvel... might have been in a team up but I don't well, think like he... he has did he no that was a Wonder Man um, yeah, he's been, I have Marvel team ups and Marvel two and ones with him in it. I have yeah. quite a few things with him in it. So we'll have to explain that. Cause is it, there, you, is there a what if, or it's like, what if Jack of hearts had a better name? No, <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, he's a, yeah, he's a weird dude, but I'm, I'm sort of fascinated by him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he kind of like, he's very intricate costume for, I think the reason why he don't see him very often is because you have to draw all this little shit yeah. on his body. You know, like all these little like art, you know, uh, armaments and designs for his. It'd costume. probably be easier to do it now. You can just do a copy paste. Well, but I mean, you have to draw it into all these different poses and stuff like that. Well, that's true, but I mean, like now with computers, you can. I don't know copy, how they draw paste real it. comics now. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure people still do it by hand, but I'm sure there's people who do it in like Illustrator, right? You know, and stuff, and you draw it. And then you can literally copy that shape and like change it and right. skew it and move it around. Yeah, which makes things e- easier. Um, yeah. So I don't know. We'll, so, yeah. we'll, we'll get to, we'll get we'll get to him. All at right. Some point. So let's take a break though. Okay. We'll come back and then we'll talk this book. We'll talk about our book for the week. Hey everybody, I'm Paul Spitaro. I don't know if you know me, but I'm a regular on Back to the Bins along with my friends, Dr. Bill Robinson. Hello. And Mr. Scott Gardner. Hey, how's it going? Andy's been asking us for a promo for the show for the longest time, and Bill has been writing it for the longest time. Bill, you got that promo written yet? Uh... Okay, so, anyway, what we do is we review three comic books. We try to do it every week. 
usually it's a Marvel, a DC, and a Captain Canuck book for Scott. So, tune in every week to Back to the Bins to listen to our show. You can find us at twotruefreaks.com. All right, we are back here on Worst Collection Ever, uh, and we are going to talk about Captain Adam. Welcome back to the show, Captain Adam. Um, I believe this is the second Captain Adam we've done, I, okay. if I can recall, um, because we did the Christmassy issue, I think, last year. Oh, and, that's right. Yeah, and I, th- I I can't think we did another one, but he's definitely... Uh, he's here. He's here. So yep. yeah, we got him here. Uh, Captain Adam, number five, from July 1987. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got the main event right on this cover here, uh, Captain Adam, and then right beneath this is V. Oh, this is a versus. Versus, I know. V. Firestorm, the nuclear man. Mm -hmm. And on the cover, you got Captain Adam jumping, you know, they're they're meeting in the middle. Captain Adam is jumping towards, uh, Firestorm. Firestorm is headbutting him in his chest. Firestorm is headbutting him in his chest with his fire brain. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So They're getting into it's it. Going, it's going down. Though I would have to say that I don't know if I would really describe what happens in this book as a versus. It's just a big misunderstanding. Uh, but they yeah. got but, but, you know, but, cover. But they're, but they're fighting-ish. Uh, sort of, yeah. They're having a fight. I guess. You know, so you, so you could say that it's a, it is a thing. Yes. So. Um, yeah. This, this Captain Adam is the Captain Adam who was in he's kind of like a, a captain america in that he's like a man out of time well he just got they just got him from the he was from 1968 charlton. yeah this guy from the charlton crossover I, I'm, I'm probably hopefully, hopefully i think i'm right uh the charlton crossover because he used to be a charlton comic comic book character yeah and then basically you know they kind of ret- retconned it that he was kind of like a captain adam you know or captain america type of uh hero story yeah Oops. Uh, Captain America, Captain America type of story, where he, um, you know, was away. You know, he was away for a long time, suspended in some sort of anim- you know, some sort of stasis for a long oh, he, time. I thought he got whatever happened to him that made him Captain Adam, like propelled him forward in time or yeah. something. So for him, it was just like a couple of minutes, but for everybody else, it was years. Yeah, of now time. he's all, yeah, now he's all, and now he's back. Yeah, now he's all souped up for the eighties. Um, because you know, before he used to have like just like a costume, like a shirt and pants or whatever thing. And but didn't they also they have retconned this since then? Though, they have, yeah, haven't they? His because history has changed a bunch. I was gonna say because that's not how it is now. Because I still but remember it's even different now because when they they with the new fifty two and rebirth, like yeah, stuff well, I has don't changed even know. pretty drastically for him. I haven't really kept up on it. I do recall reading an issue or two of the new fifty two Captain Ab and finding it. uh dreadfully boring mm. to the point where I just, I was like, cause I, was, cause I wanted to get into it. You oh, know, it's Captain know. Adam, I think he looks cool. Yeah. You know, I kind of dig him. So I was like, all right, well, let's see what this is like. And, and uh, you fell asleep and I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it. You yeah. know, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. So, yeah. um, but the eighties stuff I dig. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of, you know, cr- cause he was also in the jail, jail justice league Europe, And, mm-hmm. you know, he had a lot, lot going on, you know, with the regular DC universe. And I like that, you know, clearly right here, you know, fire service head butting him. Yeah. You know, with his, Firebrain. Well, I, I think my favorite thing was when he was on the the Justice League Unlimited. Is that yeah. the yeah? Because our Green Arrow at one point turns to him and says, "I think I marched against you in college." Yeah, <laughs> which I always found funny. Yeah, he's basically <laughs> um, Cap- Captain Adams, basically Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, from uh, uh, Watchmen. Now the Watchmen are coming into the DCU. Sure, it's supposed to. Apparently, it's supposed to start happening like next month. Yeah, great. That's what the okay. guy at the bug was uh, telling some other guy. Oh, what? Oh, you got over. Oh, you ever heard it? I did overhear that. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, because yeah, well, they've listen. been they've been teasing it hmm. for since like rebirth started, and now I guess it's oh, gonna actually. Start. I, it's. Are they just gonna reboot all the books again? This is why I trade weight for new shit. It's really hard for me to. St- is it why I just read old shit? Well, this is why I read old shit. Number one, uh, number two is because it's cheaper, and number three is because they reboot shit so constantly that I just can't keep up with it. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, I'll just wait. If I really want it, I'll get it in trade. And I know that's probably not the attitude that the comics industry would like me to have. Well, too bad. Sorry. <laughs> do do just 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 can you? I mean, look, can you just can you just have had 
the numbering of an issue and just keep numbering it the same thing instead of rebooting it all the goddamn time. Well, I guess DC isn't doing that. I mean, now. Well, they're now. trying to do like, it again. Now but, Marvel I mean, is just like, crossover. Uh, crossover uh, reboot. Fuck, okay, now we're it it, I mean, And it, they're just like, goddamn disaster. And like, you're like, it drives stop. Me nuts because they, they, every time I'm looking, it's always like, we got a brand new Captain or Captain America number one. I'm like, how many times has yeah. this come back? Like, you have to be on like, vol- they have to be on like, 13th volume of this point. Well, not only that, but like, if you want to keep up with what the hell your character is doing, you have to follow them across like every title. <sighs> Sure. And you're like, I don't want to, I, I don't have the money to spend on all that. Nope. Like, I just, just tell me a story in the book that I'm reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can't just have, can't you just have like little story? Like, this is actually a very contained story. It so is. This I, one, yes. I, I, I appreciate it. That's actually why I like a lot of the earlier stuff is because they are contained. Yep. Uh, especially like in the, those Bronze Age ones that I tend to favor. It's just like, this is the story that happened in this issue. I totally agree with that. And, uh. This is this is good. Yeah, this is this will be. Oh, by the way, do you know we didn't say we would read the issue for last week, the next issue of Spider Woman? I don't think we did that. Oh, did we not? Yeah, the one with Triple H and the yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know in the suit, in the suits, and I'd read another story about that suit. I would too. <laughs> um, but as far as buying another uh, uh, Spider Woman issue mm, in that run, maybe um, there are other. There I'll are, say maybe there are Spider Woman issues in that run because that run went on for a couple of years that I am interested in. Sure, but I am not uh, particularly interested in uh, any, you know f- continuing what's going on there. I say so. maybe. Yeah, we'll go maybe. I'm probably gonna say no. Huh. So, but so let's get into this ca- book. Yeah, let's talk about Captain Adam though. Captain Adam number uh, five, five from five. July 1987. Uh, the story apparently is called "The Return of Doctor Spectro, Spectro," and we get a flashback of Captain Adam in his uh, Charlton costume, mm. where he is fighting. He's, he's posing. He's posing. He's having a superhero pose. Yeah, oh, he is. And uh, he's fighting. A uh, apparently Doctor Spectro who is getting who's zapping Captain Adam with his Emoto beams, mm-hmm. um, which I don't know if they're really doing anything. They're just kind of making him have a hard time to move and not making it, him sad or anything. I don't know. It's just very hard for me to believe that he came out of the Charlton. Oh no, it's consumed him with rage. Oh, that's right, rage. Oh, uh, it's very hard for me to believe that he came out of the Charlton line. Yeah. Because I read, I have a bunch of those romance comics. I have a bunch of those romance comics from Charlton, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then I did research on it, uh, and who knew there was like a lot of shit going on in that, yeah, that line for a long time. The Beatle, the question, and stuff. Who knew? I did not know. But now I know. That's what I'm saying. Then when uh, you know DC came in, they told. I mean, they bought a bunch of stuff. Yeah. You know. So, um, but yeah. So yeah. Apparently, okay. So they made him. It made him angry. Yes, consumed with rage after he gets blasted by the beam. And then he goes outside and he goes, Yarg. Yarg. He does go Arg. But then we find out that we're just, the flashback is because uh, this woman is reading a book. And she's a, a journalist, I think. Yeah. And so she's, uh, apparently Captain Adam wrote this book. Yeah, he wrote a biography. A, a biography, biography. About what he went through and all that fun stuff. Um, and I guess it's a hot seller because she does have one of my favorite lines later. Oh, yes. Well, she talks about how this book is, it's a, it's a really big deal. Cause he just came back in time and, you yeah. know, cause the whole thing was like the story about the, the story, particular story is that he jumps, uh, you know, he, he's about to explode and then he flies off. Right. And at the last moment he protects himself. Sure. So, which is, and, and saves everyone and himself and whatever. Sure. And, and, and then she's like, but this, he's such a hot property. She's talking to her editor and she says, Walter, I'm serious. Captain Adam has joined the ranks of Max Headroom, Eddie Murphy, and Crocodile Dundee. He's become a hot media property. That is literally. <laughs> that is the most 80s of lists. That is a literally, <laughs> no, that, that, that is not even the most 80s. That is a literally the most 1987 list. Oh, yeah. You or, can have. Yeah. Which, I mean, the only thing that's missing in here is like Ernest goes to camp. Oh shit! Yeah, Ernest they P. Should. Warrow <laughs> could, have, could have had a could have could have been in. Why didn't too. they should have put him on there? But they were just going for the rule of three. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, Spud <laughs> McKenzie totally could have been in there. Oh, well, he showed up at the Super Bowl. 
Maybe right. he did a Captain Adam. Maybe he was going to consume. Was he also in Charlton Comics? Yes. Okay. Well, he was going to consume all that that energy, and then he like jumped ahead to the Super Bowl. Oh, is that like, what, what am Captain I doing Adam, here? Captain Adam became a dog. Yes. He became a beer loving, party loving <laughs> yeah. dog. Yes. And he traded in his uh, Hawaiian shirt and his surfboard to like save the world. I want to believe this to be true. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. Dog, that's, that's actually what happens at the end of this run. Is he becomes Spud McKenzie? Oh, nice. Uh, and then he gets into a convertible driven by. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's say uh, Mo. Mo. And, uh, <laughs> yes, Mo, a famous Mo. Famous Mo. <laughs> and and then he uh, he basically does a DeLorean uh, Back to the Future thing, except he goes into the into the future and he ends up at the Super Bowl. That's how this run ends. Mm, sounds yeah. very confusing. I hope yeah. they recon it. <laughs> I don't like it. It's actually part of several tie-ins. That's uh, why it's hard to follow. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm not. I'm not into it. We need Jeff Johns to do some cleanup. Uh, so this woman's like, hey. He, all he would do is probably just change it from Bud to PBR. It's like, my work is done. Goodbye. No, no, he'd be like, this is all about the Flash. <laughs> I just want you guys to know this is all about the fucking Flash. Yeah. Because Jeff Johns loves the Flash. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, this woman and her publisher, she's like, Captain Adam is huge. What if we got Dr. Spectro to write his version? Oh. What? What about that? So it's basically he. She wants to do a spinoff. She wants to, yeah. She's just trying to capture. It's, it's like you know, capture down like a celebrity. This is this is like, the, like, like this is like Jersey Shore, and they're like, this who is can, the total who, divas. Who want? Yeah, yeah, to, total divas. Or you know, and I think when Jersey Shore, when like you know, Snooki wrote a book, and, yeah, and Vinny wrote a book, sure. and Polly D. Can wrote we put a, wrote in quotes? We're, we're right, but they're all writing books, you know. So everybody's writing a book, you know. So we're trying to get on this, you know. Yep. Um. Yeah, and so there's uh So that so that's her plan. She wants to track down Dr. Spectro. So then we yeah. cut to Captain Adam is talking to what's this guy? Oh, who is this dude? Baldy McEye Patch. <laughs> he has a name. I know he does. I don't remember what it is. Doctor something. I think we find it out later. Dr. Schlepp. And he's talking about how like, oh, when you did that thing, you actually only went ahead in time six days instead of last time when you went ahead in time like a million years or whatever. Yeah, it kind of kind of just kind of gives us the update as to what's been going on with him. Yeah. And then uh, some guy who I assumed was John Stewart, but is not, walks in and he was like, hey, Captain, I've got orders from the general, and Captain Adam's like, my leave isn't over, and I have to take my daughter to the carnival. Yeah. So pretend you didn't see me. And he's like, good call. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, he's like... Uh, he, this guy's name? Who, the bald guy? No. no well, hang on. What are you no, doing? Go ahead. I'm looking for this guy's name. So, but yeah, but basically, yeah, he just... he. Th- 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 okay, so this dude, <laughs> whoever this dude is, I don't... I, 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 He's got a name, but he looks like, like the evil guy in the center. Megala. 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 It's over here. Oh, Doctor Megala. Doctor Megala. Doctor Doctor Baklava. Um, <laughs> but Delicious here's, here's, doctor. But here's the thing: like he's apparently some like doctor of her that works for the government, but he looks like he's he's in a fuchsia Professor X like space. Wheelchair. wheelchair yeah and he's also got like electrodes and he's all like attached i, I and, like, assume got, those are he's electrodes got, he's, got, he's got a fuchsia eye patch he's got a big big uh kyle Kinane beard and he's got like these electrodes sticking out of his head he looks like he belongs in mad max yeah exactly yeah and everybody's just kind of like yeah so uh i'm going to the fair <laughs> you want me to bring you back some uh cotton candy elf- you, want, you want some you want an elephant ear can you even eat an elephant ear <laughs> Dr. Megala. He's like, can you give me some of those almonds that they do in the sugar? You know, which ones you know what's I'm really talking good about? You really popcorn they put the sugar in it. Can you give me some of that? And then when yeah, you come you here, give me the you, kettle corn? Can, yeah, kettle corn. Can you, can, can, you, can you feed it to me? And How about a funnel cake? And there's a scene later where this bald dude that gives him the orders uh, comes and fe- gives the kettle corn to this guy and he feeds it to uh, Megala. Oh, yeah. That's there's a, a great That's a, a great scene. It's a very touching scene. It's like, it's like, it really is. It's like, it's like a giant, like, splash panel. You know what it is? It's that scene in Batman v Superman when Lex feeds that guy a Jolly Rancher, <laughs> but like a touching version of that scene. And yeah. that's actually, this book is where they got that idea. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's there, somebody was reading this, like, uh, David Ayer. Or whoever the fuck his name is, I think that's uh, right. Goyer. Yo, Goyer, yeah, David Ayer, yeah, same same company, same um, guy. <laughs> David Goyer was reading this this particular Captain Adam, and he goes, "You know what? I'm so touched. This is missing. I really wanted this guy to be eating some kettle corn. But what, maybe? <laughs> Let's say maybe we can have somebody feed something to somebody. Yeah, and Batman. I don't know how it's going to happen. Um, what candy will give us an endorsement? <laughs> 
how can we make it really comfortable uncomfortable <laughs> what if it was like reese's if that gave them an endorsement he would have had to just like shove an entire peanut butter really, cup what, in that what, guy's what mouth really, what if it was really melty and then it's like and then it gets <laughs> melty on the guy's mouth and he just kind of starts wiping it off and he's like, ah. <laughs> like what would be the worst candy to have to feed another person oh uh hmm uh Ooh, a dipping stick. <laughs> <laughs> or, or. Circus peanut? That would just be gooey. Just... You just you break, maybe break it off into little pieces. But like, mm. <laughs> but like or, they're a bird? <laughs> yeah, or. Ooh, a ring pop? Ooh, uh, <laughs> that would be awkward, wouldn't it? Just like. Well, you just like. Uh... <laughs> you put your, and somebody just suck it on your ring pop, and then is you it, have to stand there with your hand me, out. Please tell me that there is just hours of footage of just this happening, happening. <laughs> trying out different candies oh man that ha- it all outtakes oh man that that's gonna be in the boxed edition when they release the entire dc uh movie universe uh is gonna be so much footage and it's just gonna have like cut after cut of him like shoving like an eskimo pie in people's faces eskimo and, like, pie. <laughs> could you imagine getting eskimo pie <laughs> how do you shove an eskimo pie Does... well that's that that, kind of that go... was the trick there's a thing because like, a, a klondike bar Custom pie, let's go pie. You kind of have to like comply to opening your mouth a bit. <laughs> you know, I don't think I think with the jolly ranch, you can kind of stick it in there, to right? Like an open, yeah, yeah, yeah. His lips. You can't just be like let's go pie. <laughs> well, that's why they tried all the different things they wanted to see. That'd be a good panel. Tootsie Comic-Con. pop, really long tootsie roll. Just <laughs> oh, the one of those really long ones. Yeah, Ooh, nerds rope. <laughs> <laughs> trying to shove the entire nerds rope in some dude's face just feeding it in there like <laughs> mm, mm. it's like when a uh, when a ma- magician pulls a handkerchief out of his but the uh, other way yeah exactly oh. <laughs> just the other way oh boy that's a good show yeah good it's movie. the best show so that was a good movie guys <laughs> um anyways so they let captain adam go to the fair yeah they're like we'll pretend we didn't see you go to the f- take then, your take your daughter to the this fair government building stuff here something about Oh, is this that woman? Yeah, that's that woman, and they. they oh, because she's getting intel on. She, I think, yeah, this. she wants to find Doctor Spectro, or whatever. Yeah, she's trying to find this Doctor Spectro, and she's you know she's hacking into so this is like. Yeah, whatever. it doesn't matter. She, she <laughs> it literally, gets, doesn't matter. She's looking for him. That's all you have to know. Um. So then we cut to the so fair. Now so we're at the fair, and Captain Adams at the fair with his daughter, who is now only five years younger than him. Who's that five years younger than him? And she looks like she's drawn by Dick Sprang. Yeah, she's got the biggest. She's lips. got the biggest, goofiest lips. Yeah. In this particular picture, she just looks very. She looks like Amanda Lepore, if anybody knows that reference. <laughs> is, that, is that a uh, drag queen? Uh, I believe she started out as a drag queen. Okay. Um, but she's got huge, just huge, giant plastic surgery lips. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, who is this guy? I always, I think we've talked about this the other day. I don't know who this guy is. I still don't know. Does he mention this? No. As well? He's like, I'm going to the fair with. Uh, he just says, I'm taking my daughter to the fair. Flobbity flu. Yeah, his daughter's name was Peggy. And could she? And so what happened was when he was dead or when he was away, his wife, uh, Captain Adam's wife, mm-hmm. remarried. Remarried a, a General Eiling. Maybe that's who that's supposed to. And be. I think he's somebody. Well, this I don't know who this dude is, but her stepfather is General Eiling, and General Eiling and Captain Adam are not friends. Okay. So, okay. Just to, you know, so that's why there's all this cont- uh, con- uh, contentious con- nature all right. here. Um, so I don't know. Is this her boyfriend? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's her boyfriend. Yeah. I I, but it's an older guy, so maybe it's Captain Adam's friend. And they're wearing their their their, their, their like uniforms. Uniforms, and they're they basically look like pilots. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> So they're like, taking, and he's like, oh. see, this is like, it has to be his Captain Adam's friend, and Captain Adam shouldn't be friends with this guy, and I'll tell you why. Oh. Besides the fact that he, we t- find out later that he's like a double crosser, but they're like sitting on this, uh, you know, it's one of those rides where you sit in it, and it, it goes around and you go up in the air. I don't, they have a name, I don't know what they're called. Whatever. So they're, it's like a rocket. I have a scar from one of those. Oh yeah, what happened? Oh, they closed the gate on my arm. Oh. <laughs> I was at I was at Darien Lake in Western <laughs> New York, and like it was one of those things where they just were like I had my hand too close on, and they were like chunk, and it took out like a chunk of my skin and my uh. wrist, and like I think I told somebody, and they were like stop complaining. Oh, yeah. There was the most terrifying thing that ever happened to me on a ride 
We were at Elages. This is before it was the Six Flags. Mm -hmm. So this was like the old Elages in Denver, which it's no longer at that location. For some reason, they had... Do you remember the spider? No, but I can imagine what it's like. Okay, so it's like this big, tall thing, and it has like cars, and you go really, really high in the air, and they spin around, right? But for some reason, they thought it was a good idea to put the spider on top of the bumper cars. So you're already like... 15 feet in the air and then they put it on top of a building so you're even higher so like oh, it's on top of the actual ride it's on top of the bumper car place you can't do that that's what they, that's where they had it it was on, for some oh. reason my parents were like have fun like, that's, that's not supposed to happen <laughs> right you're not supposed to put rides on top of rides it was rides on top of a ride so we uh but, but the bumper car is just like a building so it's on the roof of like where the bumper cars are okay but still so we go up to the thing and we go in it, and I was like eight, my si- which makes my sister like five, so she was like five or six. Okay. So I was always the one who had to be in charge of her, so we're on this stupid spider, and they're loading people in. So they, you know, they load you in, they move the car to the next one, right? Yeah. Because not everything comes down at the same time. So, but the problem was my sister was so small that she started sliding out from underneath the uh, seatbelt. So we're, like, hanging over this, like, off the edge of the roof, and Mm -hmm. she's, like, falling out of the car, and I'm, like, holding on to her so she doesn't die, and we're just like, no, let us down, let us down. They didn't listen to us, and then Mm. then we had to ride the ride with her almost falling out the entire time, because she was too small to be on the damn ride, and they just let her go on anyway, because I was with her, and I had to hold on to her the entire time so she wouldn't die. And then we finally got off the ride, and I don't think I ever wrote, wrote Spider again. That's what happened. It was I, terrifying. When I, when I was 12, I went to Cedar Point mm-hmm. in uh, Sandusky, Ohio, which is, was a uh, big uh, touristy place. Okay. In, uh, you know, for people to go like near Buffalo, you know, if you would, because like, you know, the roller coasters, it's a big, you know, it's a big place. I don't know if it's still there anymore. And it was one of those things where you just go on all the roller coasters. And it was great because I would just go on all these different roller coasters, whatever. But for some reason, I was 12. And now when I was 12, I was like a blobby horse. <laughs> so, <laughs> was, is that the technical definition? Yeah. <laughs> was, when, when I went for my, you know, when I went for a physical, they, my son was like, well, your son's a blobby horse. They were like, please send him to the vet. He's a blobby horse. Here are some blobby oats. <laughs> um, and I had to, like, but it was like one of those things where I had like, I was gonna ride a uh uh like uh like one of those machines like one of these things. Mm-hmm. Like one of these things where like you have put like some something similar where you have yeah. to sit in a cart and for some reason they're like you're not old enough or tall enough, even though I was like a blobby horse and I maybe sit <laughs> in between the legs of a college bro. You know? Wait, like, why in between his legs? Or because that's how the seats were? Because they, you know, they may just sit there and just like, well, you have to go with somebody that's older, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, you know, and, you know, that's that's 21. I'm like, what? Why are you for- foisting these rules on me? I just rode your tallest roller coaster <laughs> with my sister, and I went screaming down the thing. <laughs> blobby horse and i was a giant i'm, I'm just I'm maybe just, they were just like we can't let horses on without supervision sure i think that's probably what happened <sighs> so did that college bro make you safe I, sure he did i just was very i was kind of like you know he was i remember him being like uh oh, i guess i'm doing this yeah he was probably sad that you weren't a lady yeah i know he's probably home oh, so he's not a young girl or you know like a you know girl close to my age i can maybe get her in digits because we're you know <laughs> Because it's 1990-whatever. It's 1992, you know. Maybe she might like some <laughs> Belle Biv DeVoe and some uh, White Snake or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, you know, but no, you know, I have to hang out with this blob boy. Well, at least you, you didn't know, almost uh, you know, lose you know, you your Goldberg sister to gravity. <laughs> at least you didn't almost lose your sister to gravity. No, I know. <laughs> like Yours me. is a lot more tragic than mine. I <laughs> it's just, just had really sit, traumatic. I just, I just had to sit with a dude. You know, yours was like, your sister has fallen <laughs> off like fucking... <laughs> Like, like some sort of uh, awful, <laughs> awful fucking unsolved mysteries kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it would have been terrible. She would have just plummeted into her death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my mom would have blamed me. You know that, right? Yeah, like, 100%. My mom would have yeah. 100% told me it was my fault yeah. because my poor eight-year-old arms got tired and, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and no, I you, let you, go. It would have been your fault. Yes, Kids. I know. The onus of holding your sister's weight up on a ride that is in motion <laughs> is on you. I know. 
Ugh. Uh, joy. Anyways. Anyway, so in this book, uh, nobody dies. Nobody. Thankfully, <laughs> that none of these things happen. Thankfully, Captain Adam does not have to sit between the legs of a college bro, <laughs> or, or hold on, or his, his daughter doesn't fall off. <laughs> He's not holding his daughter <laughs> so she doesn't die. Um, um. So he goes. Yeah. So there's yeah. Some oh, but this is this is why they're ter- This guy's terrible because oh, it's Captain okay. Adam's friend. Uh, the daughter's like, yay, this is fun. And he's like, oh, I remember when I used to take you on these when you were little. And then I had to change your diaper. Uh, wah, wah. Wait, wait a minute. Like when she he took her on the ride yeah. and then he had to change. Wait, so she's saying, is he implying that she was old enough to go on these rides and then she would shit her pants? And then you change <laughs> this her is pants? what I assume. She says, woo wee. It's all coming back to me now. I remember when you used to take me on rides like this all the time. You used to complain. I'd always end up with dirty diapers by the end of the ride. Wait a minute. You can't take a baby on these rides <laughs> it was the 60s you could take a baby anywhere <laughs> oh really was that how that was yeah i think you like you just held it by the arm and hopefully the arm didn't fall off babies went everywhere in the 60s yeah, yeah. Well, apparently well, apparently he was that's a thing because i'm like he was a little see that's the thing it's like if she was old enough to ride this ride she probably wasn't wearing diapers yeah I, just... apparently he, captain adam always unless said she, unless she had childhood ibs i don't know <laughs> yes that's that's the problem it was childhood ibs they just didn't have a diagnosis <laughs> uh but then he captain adam's like i think it was because of the oxygen deprivation that's why you were shitting yourself <laughs> And then he's like, "What do you think, buddy of mine?" And the buddy, what do you think, buddy who has a had who had a raging heart on for my daughter? Who he's like, all this talk about shit in your pants make my penis soft. No, because then he says, "I guess the altitude and the G's just got to be too much for this ditzy daughter of yours." Wait. He calls her a dit. I know that. That's what, wait, and that's why I said Guy shouldn't be friends with him. Because then later on, he talks about giving his Captain Adam's daughter mouth to mouth. Like it's in this next panel. Let's hope we don't have to resuscitate her, Captain. Very funny. Yeah. So not I don't know about you, but and he goes and gets cotton candy. Yeah. So like your friend. Okay. Imagine your friend. Guy your own age. You're hanging out with your daughter. And he's like, man, I hope I don't have to give your daughter mouth to mouth. And you're like, ah, like, oh, would that be okay with you? Would you still be I that guy's friend? That, I would get off that ride and fight him. <laughs> you would have to fight him. That man is talking about I would fight sexually him and probably get evicted molesting the, your daughter. I would get evicted from the fair and that poor <laughs> guy in the fuchsia wheelchair would not get his kettle corn. If, if people, do you think people get evicted for fighting at carnivals? Because there would be no carnivals. <laughs> Well, you know, they, they there'd be put, no people. They, they just put you on the outside and just, say, <laughs> just go around the other way, and so nobody sees you. Do they put it in that place that is not in, in Disneyland? They put, you, they, put, they put you in Carney Jail. <laughs> That's where they put you. <laughs> Do they put, they put you in? A, they put you in a horse stall because they put they where the animals are, and they say, "Okay, think about what you did. Go we'll hang out with this pig." <laughs> Isn't there like a place in Disneyland that like well, yeah, d- d- is not technically Disneyland? So that's where they take people who die in the park. So the nobody or, or or they go to Disney Jail. There could be a Disney Jail. Disney Jail. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is Disney jail. I, I, I should have to, I should probably research that because there's like a lot. There's like a book of secrets. On well, Disneyland. yeah, there's a place that apparently is like where they take injured people. Well, we are right. They take you so off you, property. They t- and it's like, but it's like in the park where it's technically off par- property or and something. And if you die there, you didn't technically die. In exactly. Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, that's why no one's ever died in Disneyland because they take you outside before you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so let's. Yeah. Anyway, so or they, they take you outside before they declare that you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, they're walking around with the. Where, where does this dude go? Oh, he like goes to get cotton candy or something. And no, does the Captain Adam goes to get cotton candy? Oh yeah. Doesn't he like? I don't know. Cat- this guy's name is Jeff. Yeah. Jeff. Jeff the creep. Jeff the creep. Who also looks like Don Knotts. Who also looks like Don Knotts and has the skin tone of George <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> He does. Um, oh, but you know what it is? So he sees like a guy from one of Dr. Uh, Eiling's guys who's oh, kind of like okay. trying to make sure that he do- Captain Adam does have a good time. Yeah. So he goes and kind of chases after that dude. Yeah. And then the daughter's like, this is weird. Like, I'm obviously not a kid anymore. Yeah. Whatever. So then they... they Gauze? Get- Jeff Gauze? Because he calls him same old Gauze. Yeah. He's like, oh, same old creepy Gauze. Always trying to sleep with my daughter. <laughs> what a joker. Uh. Uh, so they get cotton candy and they walk along together. And I guess like there's a brother involved, like Captain Adam's son. Yeah. Who doesn't want anything to do with him or something. Yeah. There's something going on where Captain Adam wants to talk about him and the girl's like, no, dad, you said you weren't going to do it and whatever. 
So I don't know what's going on there. And then they see some guy being like, hey, you step up and... and yeah, some guy's like, hey, how about something for your your girlfriend? Yeah, win, like, a, win mm. a bear for your girlfriend. And he's like, well, he's like, how dare you? Blah, 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 whatever. So then as that's happening, like, Gauze intercepts some orders or something that are coming over to Captain Adam. Yeah. And then he takes them in the photo booth and he takes pictures of them. Oh, man. And then he comes and he gives them to Captain Adam. Sure. Sure. Uh, so then we're with that journalist again, and she's, I'm assuming, at the bar where Superman was a bar back in uh, Superman, Man of Steel. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, the, yeah. In, the, in the movie. Yeah, in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's like some really creepy bar, and this woman like fucks up this guy's shot, and he's like, hey, um, I'm here to talk to you. I think you're this guy. Your spectro, right? Yeah, she's she's snooping around. And then we're at a grave. Yeah, then we're at a grave, and then we're this, at wait, is this Captain new... Adam's wife's grave. Yeah, she's yeah, dead. At the end. She, she's dead. They went from hey, she's... let's let's go to the carnival, and now let's go to your mother's grave. <laughs> That's a big day. Yeah, full, very full day. How do you how do you how do you you know you have to go to the carnival pretty early to make uh, well, it to the grave? It, not only that, but they brought cemetery. flowers, so they had to stop like a Ralph's. Oh man. It's a busy Swing day. Swing by the grocery store, pick up a nice yeah, bouquet. That was a, well, that guy's never got his cotton, his uh, his, uh, his kettle corn. <laughs> no one ever brought that guy his kettle corn. I need to know if it got to him. <laughs> um. So yeah, and then Gaz buddy is looking at the stuff. Apparently, he scrambled some code. Oh no, that's the picture he took. Oh, okay. so whatever message is coming to Captain Adam is like in a code that nobody's used <laughs> since like before Vietnam. Captain Adam, being an old geezer, will be able to read this. But Gauze is like, so will I, you know? Yeah, whatever. Intrigue. And so now we're back with that journalist. The guy's like, I'm not Spectro. She's like, Well, that's too bad. I guess I'll just have to take this fifty thousand dollars and light it on fire. And he's like, what did you mean, $50,000? Because this is back when people got advances for books. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, well, apparently, okay, well, hang on. Oh, now I'm crying. Well, apparently, he... <laughs> what? They still give advances for books. Not $50,000 worth of... Well, that... Yeah, maybe. They don't really give, like, huge advances like they used to. Like, uh, not, like, live on this advance. Live on this. Yeah. Mm. That's very sad. No, but I guess he's, like... He... Is f- he's probing that he has a lab assistant? No, she's trying to get intel because she's trying to get. No, think- this is the guy. But she's talking about this lab assistant that uh, stole Doctor Spectro. Or uh, like, like anybody could wears a costume, certifiable. I laid eyes on Rory Bibolo. So they're talking about the, the the Rainbow Raider. Yeah, and stuff. Who? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever there is, is there's this guy. She wants to give him money. To write a book. He says he has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, but I'll give you money. And he's like, oh, never mind. I do have stuff to do with it. So they get in the car and they drive up to, I don't know, a murder cabin. Because why not? Because that's where this guy lives. So they drive up to this cabin. And then we cut back to Captain Adam standing by a plane. So apparently the orders that he received. He's basically like a government. Like he's kind of like stuck with like a government superhero yeah he's deal. captain america in the captain first movie america, yeah yeah so they need him to come out and do publicity so mm-hmm. that was those were his orders it was for him to come and stand by this plane and smile big and they're going to show off the the first airplane that uh takes off vertically you know one of those yeah so like, so i like this okay so they're in the audience mm-hmm. and well, no, in the audience is the is what's his face. Well, uh, okay, so Firestorm's in the audience. Ronnie Raymond's in the right, audience. Right, yeah, Ronnie. And it's funny because some guy behind him, it just goes, he doesn't look like much to me. He's silver. He's made of silver. And his eyes glow. And he's <laughs> and he's flying. Yeah. And this dude, and this dude in, a, in, a, in a fuchsia polo, they love fuchsia in this book. Oh, yeah. Uh, is like, meh. You know, he's probably like, I got me a tinfoil hat. Looks like that. I could be Captain Adam. I'm Captain Adam. Look at me. I'm Captain Adam. Keeping all them government microwaves out of the old brain. They won't give me money to come and tell people planes are great. (laughs) I would like to get paid to do that. I'll just like walk into an airport and be like, hey, guys. 
planes are great. Planes are great. <laughs> They'll be like, here's your check. I'm like, thank you. You have to do it painted as silver. You have to be, be covered in like. I could paint myself silver. Just, just, just put just put like a bunch of aluminum foil on you. Planes are great. <laughs> the worst cosplay. And, and, and you're walking out and they just hand you a check. like a bag. Uh, actually, just a bag with money in it. <laughs> Does it have a dollar sign yes, on it? Definitely has a dollar sign on it. I hope so. <laughs> um, so whoever, but, you know, but Ronnie's in there. He's like, well, he looks like as a guy who fell into a vat of molten aluminum. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. All right. Yeah, that, sure. That, 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 that's true. He does. Yeah, but he he's like saying it like a bad way, like just another one of those guys that falls into molten aluminum. And you're like, yeah. I did that on Thursday. I'm fine. <laughs> he uh, he's like one of those street performers who paints themselves silver and yeah, just stands yeah, still yeah yeah so they're like you're know, like he just looks so tough he's all quantum this and quantum that like to see what he could do against my nuclear power and i'm like what are you so bitter for like yeah i don't know why he's and you're not even like did you say like, nobody invited you i think it would be probably in like the last book but for some reason sure he's really pissed off at captain adam yeah. just for existing it's just like he's just so fucking bent out of shape because they have somewhat of a similar power. Yeah. But really not that similar. So I don't know what his problem is. He's just pissy for no reason. And so then we cut back to that guy in the laboratory. We cut back to this laboratory. And this is where is it, you, is this you Dr. get Spectro. Yeah, this is where the, you got your picture from. So there's this guy who is basically like he's ex- explaining um, some, all, all of the stuff that. Uh, whatever's in the lab. The Rainbow Raider Spectro stuff. You know, he's kind of explaining all, he's kind of, you know, just talking about how he's like, well, I'm not going to wear this costume, but like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to wear this costume, but like, you know, I got this, these weapons, you know, and I can be Dr. Spectro and, you know, I can operate in secret and. Mm -hmm. But you have to talk about that that drawing. But there's this, so this drawing, he's just posing by this machine. And I took a picture of this and put it on Instagram where he's just posing by this machine and he's got his hand around it. And, you know, this guy's just wearing like a suit and tie. And for some reason, part of this machine I'm assuming like, that's where, like, you turn it on or it's something. some sort of panel. Yeah, yeah. It's like some sort of panel is kind of... It's like an arm. on an arm. Yeah. But it's just situated in front of his crotch. Yeah. It looks like it's, like, attached to his crotch. <laughs> it does. And I just, it I, looks like he has a big metal dick. <laughs> or he's got... or, or With or, several joints in it. Or he's, that's, that's weird. Or he's downloading something into <laughs> that or being uploaded something. I mean, it looks like he's a part... Like, like he's using it. He's like, all right, yeah, I'm getting... It, I'm getting a moto beams in me. Is that the robot of the future where he just, like... His dick is like a USB? This is how Trump uh, lives every day. He puts his dick in a USB? He, yeah. Oh. He puts his dick into, like, a robot machine. And then like, <laughs> that that doc that that weird looking doctor kind of feeds him a bunch of uh, kettle corn, and then, <laughs> and then they paint him orange, and then they, and they him shove orange. him in front of the they press. Keep, they keep that's why he's so orange because they keep blaring him orange. But really, what's going to happen one day is all of a sudden it's just going to fall off, and he's just going to be like it's a gray sandwich. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Donald Trump just becomes a gray sandwich. Yeah, just like, he just his his long tie falls away, and it's just like a, just a gonna, moldy just, piece of bread fall apart. It's just a moldy piece of bread. Mm-hmm. 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 Do you think uh, that if Donald Trump becomes the dictator, uh, that all men will have to have his hairstyle? Yes. <laughs> Are you looking forward to that? Because you... <laughs> should I should I find some faux hair and start getting that ready? <laughs> Anyway, so, and we could shave Tully, and we could just yeah, well, yeah, we could, we could shave we'll the cat. Pat her because like, I don't care how it looks; I just want it to be like you mine. just got to get a swirl going. So we shave the cat, we dye it blonde, and we tape it to your forehead. Mm, okay, good. that'll look good. good. Idea. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as this is happening, we get go back to this demonstration for this plane, this declassified plane, plane that Jensen was great, and. It's called the Vanquisher, and yeah. it's just flying around. Yeah, because I guess it can pilot itself because it has like a, an artificial intelligence inside of it. And all of a sudden, uh, a rocket launches from like somewhere in the forest. Well, it's kind of like, hang on here. Because there's no human pilot. That's the thing. This is a whole like, they're trying to show the press that it can take off and like do a little bit of flying through artificial intelligence. And then all of a sudden, uh, a rocket a missile is launched from somewhere in a forest uh. and everyone's like, Oh my God, it's a missile. This could be disaster. Like that, that woman is me. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Oh no, it could be a disaster. And then Ronnie's like, Oh no, all these people could die, but captain Adam's not doing anything. He's just like, 
you know, talking to the general. And yeah, he's, that's he's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I thought he was up there, but no, that's right. He's just kind of, they're just kind of like, mm, oh. Yeah, yeah. like, what if the general is saying something to Captain Adam, which Captain Adam, being a military man, is going to stand there and listen to what the general has to say before yeah. he takes action, right? But Ronnie's just like, oh, fuck that, so angry. And so then we cut to So now he cuts to Dr. Like, uh, uh, Martin Stein. Martin Stein. So Martin Stein, Dr. Stein. Dr. Martin Stein is about to eat it, bite into a sandwich. Yeah, he's... Like, literally, he's got a giant Parmani Brothers sandwich. Yeah, he was like... Because in Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I finally get to take my break from my lab and shove the sandwich in my face. And, and Ronnie he's like time to be firestorm he's like no and he doesn't get to eat a sandwich i know he loses his sandwich he does. Does, does the sandwich just fall on the ground i assume just... so i i mean uh. so it, i don't know how becoming firestorm works it says that he's instantly teleported yeah he's instantly teleported does that mean his body or is it just his mind no his body because they both merge so is it his naked body? Like, is it just like a pile of clothes and a sandwich or like No, I think behind? just like his mind is, you know, I, I... It doesn't make sense to yeah. me. Yeah. I don't know how Firestorm works. All I, I, It makes more sense when he just like exists inside of Ronnie's head. Yeah. For me. But okay, whatever. They're split and they come together again. There's and a they sandwich become, on the ground. There's Pittsburgh. a sandwich and Firestorm. And he's so, like, why well, better go do something? Firestorm's like, I'm a hero. And everybody's like, Firestorm. And then Captain Adam takes off after him he's like Ugh, this fucking kid yeah so and everybody's kind of like oh, oh, oh boy yeah and so captain adam's like kid oh Je- this is goslin goslin jeff goslin yes it's uh kate goslin's uh uh husband oh yeah or, what, what was that guy's name oh i don't know i don't know that poor guy john 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 goslin back when that was like a thing that everybody saw all over the fucking TV. Mm. Well, when, I'm glad we. I'm glad we've progressed as a country. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have we? Yes, we have. <laughs> have we though? <laughs> so yeah, and so basically he's firestorm. Like, get the shit. plane, and and he's like he's talking shit because he's like I'm gonna go get this plane, and Captain Adams like, like back what are you the doing, fuck bro? off, dude. And he's like, what is, what's the matter? Are you gonna show up your? I'm afraid to show up your silver plated. I'm gonna show up show you up for the silver plated phony you really are. And I'm just like, why are and, you and so Stein's mad? Stein's like, bro chill yeah we just met this gentleman <laughs> we just met we literally just met him. we didn't even shake his hand you should be nice talking him talking shit to him yeah and so they're like flying around and firestorm like tries to zap the missile but captain adam like takes the zap yeah and then doesn't he like and then they they're fighting each other they're yeah, punching so, oh, well, each other you like, this, you like this one a lot oh i do like this so firestorm flies into captain adam And it goes, blam, and there's, like, a big explosion. But the way it's drawn, like, you can see Captain Adam. He's, like, hunched over because, obviously, he just took Firestorm to the gut. Mm -hmm. And here's his leg. And all you can really see of Firestorm is his arm and the top of his ass. Like, just the very tops of his ass cheeks, like, sticking out of the explosion. Mm -hmm. This is very, like, it's, like, just a mound. It's an ass mound. It's just, like, boing, boing. That's all you can see. It's great. I should take a picture of that. Yeah. Put that on Instagram. Yeah, that's and sexy. hashtag it ass mound. <laughs> Get ass. my fucking account suspended. <laughs> Doing it. Taking a picture right now. Oh, boy. But basically, you know, they're fighting. And, ba- and Captain Adam's basically showing up with Firestorm because Firestorm's just being very... He's being a uh, jackass. He's being, he's being very, you know, uh, impulsive. And Captain Ronnie, you know, and Martin Stein's like, yeah, he, if you would have known... yeah. Who he is and what he can do, because he's literally just even before Doctor Stein, you know, he he, part, he gets murdered, you know, because Firestorm, you know, Ronnie's just sitting there. It's like, ah, oh, this guy sucks. Who is this guy? You know? Yeah. And I'm like, what do you? What's your problem, bro? But like, not only that, doesn't he like take Firestorm's beams and like yeah. absorb them and like blast them back at him? And he's like, I didn't know he could do that. And he's like, well, maybe if you fucking pay attention. Yeah. Jerk. And so there's giant explosions going on in the sky. You know, big quantum explosion. Ronnie's out of commission. You know, and yeah, then, and then that's when we find out that it was all a had, ruse. It was all a demonstration to show how, and I like how they have, there's a system, yeah, called the smart as, <laughs> or it looks like I don't know if it's smart a two two or a dot z dot z. I thought it was twenty two. A22. A22. It looks like smart ass to me. Yeah, it does look like smart ass. You're it's a smart correct. ass system, and it shows because it's you know it's just, you know. A pilotless plane. Yeah. And he's like, we're just showing, you know, we're showing how it can work. And you screwed up this whole demonstration. And he's like, look, and Captain Adam's like, hey, look, superheroing is serious business. Why don't you uh, lighten up and don't make it tougher on yourself to go with the flow? And, you know, yeah. Stein's like, 
Which, can I go back to my sa- yeah. yeah, he's like, can I go please eat my sandwich, Ronnie, you, you hot-headed idiot? You dummy. And so that's the end of Captain Adam or Captain uh, or Firestorm in this issue. So that's why I'm kind of like, I don't know if it really what it wasn't really a versus for me. It was just Ronnie's an idiot. I don't know why they just, they just wanted to fit him in because they yeah. probably were like, hey, because you know what they you know they usually will do. They have to have a, a more they established try to bring, hero. They try to bring in the established like 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 uh, I think I have it. I don't know if it's which issue it is, but uh, it's pretty early in the run where a Swamp Thing just shows up. You know, I mean, they're all everybody's there. You know, so they're trying to figure out how to stick them all in. Right. They want you to. Yeah. Are you yeah. posting that? I'm posting it right now. Hashtag booty booty booty. Booty booty booty. Yeah. That's too many booties. Anyways. <laughs> So she's what's what's going on here? Um. Oh yeah. So that's done, and now oh oh. But we find out that as Captain Adam is like flying through the air, uh, Roz, uh, go no gauze, is looking through his binoculars, and he's like, yeah, you know, you might have everybody else fooled with the silver and the glowing eyes, but I know it's my buddy. Whatever his buddy's name is. Oh wait, so they don't know that it's. I don't think that we don't know that it's Nathaniel Scott. I don't think that, that the they know not, that. Public identity? I don't, I don't think it's a. Well, I don't know because it says, yeah. "Funny thing about that silver skin and the glowing eyes, old buddy. Together, they do a great job of keeping keeping your secret from just about everybody, almost everybody." Mm. Okay. So I don't know if that means whatever whatever it means. He's there's some secret. And uh, he's going to expose it. So then we're back with the guy and the the journalist. And she's Spectrum. like, oh, you're great. Here's some money. And oh, by the way, you doubled it to 100 grand. And she's like, okay, I got to call my editor. And then the editor's like, oh, no, you don't understand. There's a scandal with Captain Adam. Captain Adam's history, his origin, his girlfriend, his villains, they were all lies. He was never a superhero at all. He was a traitor. Traitor. And then she's like, oh, shit. You know, now now we're not going to give you any money, guy, who just yeah. fed me a load of bullshit. And she's like, yep, that's true. After you left, I looked up everything I could about, you know, this Dr. Spectro and uh, decided I'm going to be him. Yeah. But and then I'm going to kill you. And so he does. He like disintegrates yeah. her into many, many little atoms. Mm hmm. And then he and then he's like, and now I yeah, am he uses Dr. That Spectro. He does shoot her. Apart. He does. Yeah. It, it's all spooch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so angry at this comic book! I just threw it off the table. And just gestured and threw this book off the table. Fuck you, book! Because you just off spooged. the table it went. Because yeah, because she's because she's basically <laughs> I just like got that with my fingernail and went oh. off the table. Basically, he's like, you know, she's like, yeah, you know what? I made a mistake, but I'm gonna go and, uh, you know, I'm gonna make sure it's not gonna happen again. You know, because I'm gonna fuck with you or whatever. Yeah. And she's like, nope. And here's my dick machine. And zap, <laughs> kaboom. <laughs> And, and he, now, now he's Doctor Spectro. Yeah, and uh, sure. that's it for the book. And then we get a bunch of letters, which, which terrible, have, terrible letters. Well, they it. haven't. Oh, would you read the actual letters? No, just the name of it. Well, they haven't figured out. I don't think they figured out what they want to call it yet. Oh, okay. I kind of feel like it's just like a, just a placeholder. Oh, it just says literally just letters to Captain Adam. Yeah, there's not even like a little drawing of Captain Adam or like a an envelope. Nothing. It just says letters to Captain Adam. There is an, uh, a letter in here that just says, "Are we ever going to get a Firestorm crossover?" And they're like, "I hope this book answered your question." So that's it for our book for this week, uh, Captain Adam number five from july 1987 would you read the next issue of this hmm. Meh. i'll go with a maybe i'm not gonna seek it out by any means i guess if we had it may- uh, maybe i'm I'm not gonna go crazy looking for it nah. I, I really don't care i might at some point collect all of these uh-huh i might try to figure out how to get my hands on all these uh from because i have like a you know a good number of them mm-hmm. already and uh yeah so we'll see you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how I feel about this. But I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this week's show. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Angry Hero Sean. S-H-A-W-N is my Instagram as well, Angry Hero Sean. Also, my podcast, I Could Talk Kayfabe with my buddy Joe Tadaro, talking about wrestling magazines and making fun of those things. You can find that on iTunes and wherever you get your podcasts. And I'm at Jen Stansfield on Twitter and Instagram, jenstansfield.tumblr.com and jenstansfield.wordpress.com. That's it for this week. We will see you guys again next time. Bye.